your character's in a difficult position because you are in charge of all the little kitties. Yes. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and what we're going to see coming up, you know, in the first group of episodes? Kind of your challenges? Yeah, it's, it's a huge challenge. You know, as a human being, when, when you're in a crisis and you're worrying about your life and your son's life, you want to just think of that. Just think of saving your kid and also trying to keep yourself healthy, but she doesn't have that choice. Um, so she's, she's given the responsibility of a lifetime because she's not only these kids looking to her and saying, tell us what's going on, she's got to keep them calm. She also has parents. I mean, you can imagine the guilt of having these kids if anything happens to them and almost be First few episodes, really, it's, it's about her trying to do, not distract them because she she she's treat them like children. She wants them to know, you know, here's what this virus is, and here's the shelf life of this virus, and here's how it happens. You, so you all know where we are, what we're what we're dealing with, but in a way, still trying to keep them calm and playing games and keeping them creative and having classes with the kids and, and trying to maintain as much normalcy as she can in this crazy situation. So she does a lot. And then, you know, there's new people in the hospital that she meets. So she's just trying to adapt to new relationships as well as maintain you know, the cool and the calm with these kids. She's, she's a teacher, so that's how we were introduced to her. Yeah. But clearly there's going to be more behind her as a person, you know, being able to level up to the situation clearly. Because like you said, you know, handling the kids is one thing, but trying to handle adults in kind of a crisis situation is another. And I just kind of get the feeling that she's going to have to step up in that and, and take over that. Would that be true? Yeah, it's, it's kind of funny doing the series because the kids actually seem to be more resilient than the adults. <laughs> You know, there's a lot more panic with the adults. I don't know if this is a thing we develop as we get older, as we become more fearful, but the kids seem to kind of have a mature way of handling it. Um, yeah, so sort of remind me of kind of what the end of um, the question was. The fact that she's not just going to, she's not just a, a manager of children, but she's probably going to be managing more. Yeah. She's, in got the a whip, she's got a whip a few people in shape. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit of the boss that comes out, um, especially you know Chris uh, Wood who plays Jake. He comes in kind of as this cocky cop with a with a chip on his shoulder, and, and uh, she's got to kind of and he and he he's there with them. And she sometimes has to kind of just tell him not to freak out in front of the kids, and, and she's got you know a couple parents, one parent who's in there with her who's always saying the wrong thing. And, so she really has to guys, keep it together. We can't afford having these children freak out. So yeah, the adults actually become a little bit more of a responsibility than the kids. How would you handle that situation with yourself, you think, if you were in it? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I think you would you hope that you would be as you would have as much integrity as possible and you would be courageous and heroic and you save the world and you know, you'd brush off your shoulder, but I panic if like I get a cold before an event. So I, I'd like to think I would be great, but I think I definitely I definitely would have a lot of panic to deal with. Because you never know when this virus where it can come. It can hit you right in the face if you're turning the corner and somebody's sick. So I definitely think I would have to do a lot of deep breathing and a lot of Namaste. <laughs> de-stress. Yes, de-stress. But I think at the end of the day, if I had kids that I was taking care of, it kind of takes the pressure off of worrying about you and yourself. And you're just like, okay, I have you to focus on, I have you to focus on, you got to be over here, you got to stop, you know, listening. So you just kind of, it becomes an external thing rather than an internal battle. I was just going to be thinking about the, uh, it looks like a budding romance is kind of happening with Jake. Is there really time for that in the middle of all the craziness that's going on? Well, if there's chemistry, there's time. <laughs> I don't think you can avoid it if it's there, you know. So, 
If, if, if something happens with them, we'll make time, you know? Flirt <laughs> between like putting the masks on and maybe a little eye, maybe like, oh, can you save me? <laughs> you know, you can find ways to incorporate the crisis and the flirtation in the courting. Fine. If you're all gonna die, right? I mean, why not? Why not? If you're gonna die, That's very valid. Or, or there's potential that you could die, you might as well like flirt with a hot dog. But four to six feet, how do you do it? <laughs> The ultimate test. <laughs> it's like the anti foreplay. <laughs> but well, there could be a lot, so much, a lot of eye flirtation. A lot of looks and like, what is that movie? 40 Days, 40 Nights? You get a flower. Yeah. <laughs> Dance the flower on each other. Uh, Stop. 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 There is sexting. There could be sexting. There are ways these days, right? Yes. I don't know what's what's sexy about like a bloody virus and mucus, but like you know, we'll find a way if, if, if it's meant to be.